Yeah. Okay. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Steve's coming in hot. <laughs> yeah, that's coming really hot. <laughs> coming around the corner. All right. <laughs> Really <laughs> Call this meeting of Independent District 544 to order. <laughs> Clerk, do you want to do a quorum? Certainly. Kirby Anderson. Here. Natalie Knudsen. Here. Melanie Cole. Matthew Lemke. Here. Missy Hermes. Present. Stephen Biggisop. I'm here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, could I get a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. And second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 And the agenda is approved. So our first reports, um, we're going to be starting with Derek Abrams, our activities director, talking about winter sports updates. Okay. All right, so uh, once again, I thought we had a very uh, successful <coughs> winter sports season. Um, one thing I always look at, obviously, as activities director, and what's most important is, is looking at our, our participation. And it's not just the numbers, but obviously we want a, a large portion of our, our student body involved with other activities, whether it be athletics, music, art, drama, um, our many academic teams that we have. All of those things help enhance that, uh, that high school experience. And just for the ones that I have listed, and I don't have obviously the clubs and things like that listed on here, but of the um, athletics and, and competitive, again, you, you can look at numbers. And in, during a time when it seems like numbers are really going down, you look at some of the larger schools that are co-oping a lot more. Uh, with each other and it's not because they don't have enough for the varsity but they don't have enough ninth grade 10th grade you know the lower levels and if you don't have anybody in the lower levels you gotta start getting rid of teams then you don't have varsity pretty soon so there's there's a lot more of that going on but our numbers have stayed very very stable um, despite our size so when you look at this year just this winter alone um, when you look at our, the different athletics that we offered along with knowledgeable math league one act play and speech, uh, we had 312 different kids uh, participating. That's about half of our school, just in those events alone. Again, that, that doesn't count all the many other activities that we offer. A couple of them I included in middle school in the numbers you'll see there. Um, it's actually for the number above it. So boys swimming, we included middle school. Wrestling, we included middle school numbers because they do participate for the most part at that JV level. They do have some separate middle school lanes, but for the most part it's um, with the JV. So I did include those numbers like I have I wanted to stay consistent with the I go back five years each time just so you can see and there's always gonna be fluctuations, but uh, um, you, you can see it's it's very healthy what we have the teams uh, we don't co-op with anybody um, And yet with our size being much smaller than many of the other schools that have 12 1300 kids in it uh, We offer pretty much the same number of activities as most of those uh, schools. So for the fact that we have this as two things, that, um, that our activities are strong, that, that kids are, are wanting to participate in it, and we have a lot of kids that are very, very, very busy because they participate in multiple things, not just one. Um, I, I also, the rest, the next two sheets are a lot of the awards uh, we've received again. Um, and not all the votes have always come in, have come in yet on everything. And all of the, these things, for the most part, can be found on the CLC website. Uh, sportsmanship awards, we did win um, girls hockey. And so that was uh, great to see. Uh, once again, especially since we had a very good girls hockey team. So it wasn't <coughs> one of those where, oh, there's the team we feel sorry for. That's not what sportsmanship is. They vote on it based on three factors. One, uh, the behavior of our athletes, how they um, competed and did they do it in a respectful way. Uh, our coaching staff, as well as during our home games, our crowds or our fans. That's what they base it on. And we had a lot of votes in a lot of the sports. I, um, I get to see a lot of that in a lot of second and third place 
finishes for sportsmanship. So that's something to be very proud of. Again, we are now, I think we did officially catch Brainerd um, as far as the most um, in the history of the CLC. And remember, we've, we're, we've been in the league about 15, 20 years less than Brainerd has. So we, we do now have more sportsmanship than any other CLC um, school. Uh, again, CLC performers of the week. It's just something that the CLC does. Our coaches nominate players every week that they feel deserve that honor. And then the CLC conference decides on who gets that. They choose one or two athletes per sport per week. And you can see the long list there of all of our athletes uh, that received CLC honors. Uh, the all-conference and honorable mention are on there as well. Uh, we, we did have a lot of other honors, but not all of them are directly through the State High School League or even the Coaches Association. So there's a lot you'll see out there. Um, our, our girls' basketball team obviously was very successful, so we were getting a lot of texts and, and emails about, well, so-and-so got this honor and so-and-so got this honor. I know like Ellie Colbeck was named uh, two-way player of the year by uh, Prep Basketball, which again, it's, it's a private entity. It's a magazine that someone starts. It's a for-profit thing. Um, so there, there are a lot of those out there. I don't list them all here because there's, you can't even keep track with all of them. So we stick with the State High School League and things like that, Coach Association. Uh, we did have two coaches of the year, not just for the conference or the section, but for the state. Uh, Josh Steer, our girls basketball coach, was named the state AA coach of the year. And Jess Price was named the assistant girls basketball coach of the year for AA. Uh, and then probably what we're most proud of here with our, our scholar athletes. Uh, we have a lot more scholar athletes than what's listed here, but this is a CLC thing too. This is just seniors. These are seniors that uh, earned a varsity letter, so they had to perform what, in whatever they were doing, but they also maintained the 3.5 GPA while doing that. So we have quite a list there of our scholar athletes, and they do and we do keep track of that. <coughs> for each season. What questions can I answer about our winter sports season? Again, many, uh, a lot of successes, state tournaments, which I don't have on this one. I'll be sharing this with you electronically. We, we have a spreadsheet where we keep track of everything and I'll copy them over. Uh, state, since that's not on here, state participants, obviously our girls basketball team finished second, which is the highest finish ever for our girls basketball team. We had uh, David Ronovic that qualified in cross country in uh, Nordic ski. Um, I'm going to put myself on the spot here. Uh, swimming, we had a relay team. Christian Reed, Tyler Kubala, uh, Micah Zozel, and blank. Logan Rod. Logan Rod, thank you. Uh, Logan Rod made it as our, as our relay team for swimming. Our knowledge bowl team just competed last week. Uh, they finished 20th out of 48 schools in the big school category did a very very nice job um, there and I think that covers the state tournaments um, for that but I'll add that that'll be on the electronic version which I which I share with you exciting season it was it, uh, and we had one two two other section championships that we were in which we were right in it you boys and both boys hockey and girls hockey I think the robotics team was doing it. And then the robotics team uh, was down there. They finished 20th out of 190 plus uh, teams. So they do qualify uh, for uh, state now. And that was just this last weekend. They had the regionals down at Williams Arena and uh, Mariucci. Cool. Awesome. You know, it looks like speech hasn't really bounced back from the pandemic. There, there hasn't that. been a lot, and, that's, and a lot of that ties to drama and when you don't have the the, the plays and the, and the different things it, it's it's been tough um, I should mention they did qualify their six did all qualify out of the subsection into sections this last Saturday um, in Pearl so the ones that are in there are still going strong um, and that's somewhere and our middle school numbers are quite a bit bigger okay so that that is coming back but for the high school just that if of all of them that got hit the hardest, it, it really was speech, and we've seen that around the state. Um, the, the big speech programs, you know, the Moorheads, things like that, they're, they're obviously still going strong, but when you couldn't do it and it was all virtual, it really 
get really hurt, just like uh, you know with our plays and our musicals. But that all seems to be coming back strong now, and, and we're really hoping that those are really tied together. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Derek? Thank you. Thank you. Our next report will be Kirby Anderson, Five Forty Four Foundation Finance and Activities. Okay. <coughs> I'll start with activities, actually. Um, we met on the uh, 15th of March at 7 a.m. with Derek, um, with Jeff and Matt and I, and Steve, and uh, Mark Anderson also sat in. And we had a couple different topics, but the main topic we talked about that day was the, the logo, the logo standard, and things like that, which we've already talked about at our, at our work session, so I won't spend any more time on that one. Um, finance committee. Um, we've had two meetings on the Finance Committee. Um, we caught up with Blake um, in his last week here um, on the 28th. Um, Matt and I and Jeff met with Blake and we reviewed um, basically the source and use of funds for facilities in the future where, where Blake saw us. Um, you know, where are we, what are we spending money on, um, on capital investments in the next few years and where's the money coming from? So that was a, a good review to see where he saw us at that at that point in time. And then on the 30th, um, the same four of us met again, and then we focused on the uh, 2022 and 2023 budget, which we'll be reviewing here in this group shortly, um, next few meetings. And so we went through uh, assumptions, enrollment, um, assumptions, staffing um, assumptions. Um, so basically the assumptions for the budget, and, uh, and so he had a, a, some spreadsheets that he's put together and, uh, and I think that when I stopped in to see him on his last day, then he was showing Marcy all of the spreadsheets and work, so she's aware of where everything is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so she's caught up pretty well in what's going on, and I'll talk a little bit more about that when we do the, the bills. Um, the 5-4 Foundation did not meet in March. Um, we'll be meeting this Thursday at noon, April 14th. Um, the only thing that I would... Uh, uh, want to bring up is there is a new book coming up on Monday, May 9th at 7 o'clock with the senior recognition ceremony. So that one, by the time we meet again and have this 544 foundation report will have already occurred. So Monday, May 9th, the uh, senior recognition ceremony, which the foundation uh, it has a big part in. So. so that's all I have for activities and finance and 544 foundation. Any questions? Can I add something? Sure. You know, Mindy Cuter, the head of the yes. 544 Foundation, is going to be speaking on Friday at 10 o'clock about the history of the Fergus Falls Public Schools. Oh, okay. And I think that'll be available online. Okay. Is that part of the 150 years? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Kirby. Um, the next report is from Ms. Hermes. Okay, I've, the policy committee did not meet, but um, staff development met on Monday, April 4th, and um, the budget is down now to just $2,000, which normally we would be sad that the budget is only at $2,000, but that is a budget that had it kind of ballooned during the pandemic because people weren't able to go to different trainings and so on. And, but we've been able to bring in some fantastic speakers and um, including and also have some fantastic trainings. And so one of the things that the committee talked about was the March 24th Staff Development Day and um, got really good feedback on that, including, this was a, a nice um, addition to that report, and that is that 20 non-certified staff attended and so they've really been encouraging non-certified staff such as special education paraprofessionals to attend these trains and feel welcome at them and so that that is working um, let's see those are probably the main things that we talked about in addition to just planning for next year and I mentioned this before but the staff development committee has uh, talked about changing one of those spring trainings to the fall and it looks like that is going to happen that one of the staff development days will be in november for the 2022-2023 school year thanks any questions for missy thank you um the next report is for myself 
and the wellness committee has not met. Um, buildings and grounds, there's quite a few projects happening, um, but mostly in our work session tonight, we'll be talking about the Lincoln project and kind of nailing down some of those details. So, um, next is Matt Lemke. Okay, Lakes Country Service Co-op, we actually, they meet on Thursday, so I have nothing to report for them from their board meeting. Yep, and then the Minnesota High School League did meet on April, th April 7th on Thursday. And um, just some of the things that they talked about um, that kind of some interest is the, um, again, they're going to be looking at boys volleyball again and seeing if they can get that approved. Um, so they are going to look at that. Again, that's statewide. That is not Fergus Falls or CLC or anything mm -hmm. like that. Sometimes people, when you're talking board meetings of Minnesota State High School League, that has something to do with them and not necessarily us. And so that's one of them. The other one that they're looking at and there was a discussion about is, again, this was the first year for girls participating and so in wrestling. And so they are looking at maybe adding another half a day, additional half a day at state, so that girls would be able to maybe have their divisions. And then, um, and then also they're trying to work out with, with uh, having meets that would be girls only and not counting against their actual participation for events and stuff against so if they're dual wrestling on both boys and girls not having it count against them for boys against the actual meets so that they can also wrestle um, girls and then be able to wrestle with their team on the boys if they wrestle with them so so there's some discussion on that and then the other question is since Derek is still here is just with the recent events that have happened and I know they had a student listening session do you feel that the why we play will get re-emphasized again at the state level? Um, I know we had a big push and then we had the pandemic. I know a lot of times when you have something happen where you have a big push statewide and then all of a sudden the pandemic happened and sports kind of stopped and some of the interaction of students and now with the recent issues statewide that have, state, state level wise that have happened, why we play may become again. Why we play and, and we're doing um, why we play has always been there. It's part of the, the coaches' training um, that everybody's doing um, in the inside out coaching. You know, is something that I continue to do, but it's all been virtual. We haven't met like we used to do. But yes, the, the short answer is yes. That they're they're looking at all kinds of different things to make sure that that becomes the the emphasis again with all the events that have been happening that have been pretty public um, around the state. Um, and uh, in fact, in our conference, I can tell you, we are establishing some different guidelines and unified between the nine schools. Uh, we have a governance board meeting here in about three weeks up here in Fergus for all the CLC. And that's one thing that we're bringing to the administrators is here's our plan. What do you want to contribute to this plan to make sure that we're consistent across our nine schools? Um, to emphasize, and that's the sportsmanship and the why we play and, and why we're out there, the education-centered um, activities. Because we, we feel even if the state usually takes a little longer to act on things, um, we can do it as a conference. So that's going to be a huge emphasis of our leadership uh, thing we do with our kids in the fall, as well as our governor's board starting here in about three weeks. Thank you. That's all I have for you. <coughs> Any questions for Matt? So, so that's mainly a focusing not only on the playing side, but also on the fan side. Correct. Yes. Because that's where most of the yes. yeah, parents and, and yeah. students. And fans. Yes. Other fans and, and yeah. being respectful and yeah. referees and all of that good stuff. Yes. Okay. Good. So we shouldn't throw potatoes on the ice. Oh, um, more head. Uh, no. no <laughs> <exactly>. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Can't have any fun anymore. Um, <laughs> Steve, curriculum uh, review. So I actually missed the the curriculum review last month, which was about uh, had uh, the talent development was the main part of that, right, Jeff? Mm -hmm. And that uh, uh, Krista actually was here the other day to um, uh, go over that, and we accepted the the curriculum last meeting. Um, the next curriculum review, it's actually the last one of the year, is next Tuesday. Um, the big part of that is the math 
be reviewing the new math curriculum. So, um, and then we did talk about adding meet and confer back um, met with Judah. That was in a work session last yeah. time, and so um, haven't heard anything else from that. But meet and confer doesn't really meet and confer uh, very often, anyway. So pretty easy reports for me tonight. Mm -hmm. And Do you know what other, did they only talk about talent development that night? Because uh, it was a combined two month meeting. Yeah, I don't have. I've got some of that in my report. Yeah, I totally It would be it. great if Hannah Lehman could send out the minutes from those meetings to the rest yeah. of us too. I've, I've asked for minutes before, <laughs> I just haven't pressed it, but I would like to get those minutes too. So um, I'd like to look at them as well. Mm -hmm. Do they, do they publish the minutes on the, their website? I don't know. I would assume I, maybe their curriculum page? I don't know, but that's another I possibility. I, I guess I haven't, I haven't looked. I can look for that, though. <coughs> All right, we'll move on to Superintendent Drake. All right. Uh, good evening. Good evening. First, I just want to start out with uh, several thank yous. Uh, last Wednesday was Paraprofessionals Appreciation Day. And so uh, also my appreciation goes out to Jesse Thorsted, who interviewed a number of staff for little vignettes um, showing our or demonstrating our appreciation for all that the paraprofessionals do on behalf of our students, uh, staff, and families. So, uh, and they do, um, oftentimes know our students and, and families better than any other staff member uh, in our district. So their work is very important and challenging and uh, much appreciated. Uh, the Adams School staff uh, just had a really, really successful book fair. And uh, this is an event that's um, you know reinvigorated uh, now that the COVID numbers had dropped. So it was in person. Um, they raised 12, almost $13,000. Uh, that's a new record. Uh, the former uh, top amount was 97. Uh, but when you look at just the number of um, students that had there and the families, I popped in for a few minutes and um, the staff had volunteered for this. There was pizza, there was popcorn, uh, there were parents shopping with their kids for books. It was just a really, really nice event. So. Um, special thanks to Pam Sherman who spearheaded that event and um, that staff just did a great job. Um, the last time we had a board meeting, uh, Principal Koldek was not in attendance because we had kindergarten information night and I want to thank uh, also the uh, McKinley kindergarten staff uh, for their presence at that event. 118 students were represented on that night uh, with their families. Uh, they were given a t-shirt uh, thanks to our PTO and a book thanks to Shelly Shonick. So um, Mr. Kolbeck uh, remarked that it was a very successful evening. And so this is just a little bit of a different format in the past. We used to call this either kindergarten roundup or kindergarten registration. Now that the registration process is online, it's changed more into an information night and an experience rather than uh, just having them enroll or register. So uh, very nice evening for the district. And then uh, I do really like just talking about student accomplishments uh, at each board meeting. That's why we're here. And so just highlighting some of the great things that are going on uh, in our school district. Uh, the Knowledge Bowl kids uh, left last Thursday. Uh, we had a little state send off for them. Um, they did the written round uh, Thursday evening and then had the uh, uh, actual kind of round robin competition on uh, Friday and uh, as Derek had mentioned earlier they finished 20th out of 48 which is a really nice uh, showing. Uh, we mentioned the Otterbots again ranked 20th out of 190 teams in the state and so it's fun to see them uh, with their continued success. And then this was a fun one too. Uh, this record-breaking performance was actually videotaped and shared on Facebook. And one of the neat things about uh, watching Ainsley's jump is the second jump that she made, which was into her father's arms, uh, who uh, I believe is a coach uh, on the sideline. So uh, it was just a really, really nice uh, moment watching her earn a very uh, well-deserved 
record, a meet record, and then celebrating with her dad. So congratulations to Ainsley. And then we've got uh, some FFA competitions uh, that have uh, been gearing up here in the last few weeks. So we have an ag sales team that finished second and has qualified uh, for state. So congratulations uh, to those students. And we have a horse judging team that placed second at the region and they will be going on to state. So congratulations to that team. And uh, we had an ag mechanics team place first out of 14 teams and uh, they will be going on to state as well. So um, in addition to congratulating the students, I want to thank uh, uh, Mr. Witzke for his work in uh, spending, uh, there are lots and lots of different uh, ag FFA kind of competitions. And so um, those advisors put in a lot of work because uh, they're each kind of specialty items uh, preparing their students and teams to be competitive in those areas. So uh, we mentioned the DACRAC, um, the March meeting uh, had social studies on the docket. Um, and so we heard uh, presentations, uh, oftentimes at the elementary level, the social studies is kind of embedded within your language arts curriculum. Uh, but we went through and had presentations both at the middle school level and at the high school level uh, on our curriculum, uh, everything from history to geography to uh, several psychology courses that are taught. Uh, we do run a, a pretty wide spectrum of elective classes in social studies uh, for our students to select from. Um, the March meeting was originally intended to have a presentation on our intervention curriculum. Uh, but we had a staff member that was not feeling well that evening, and so Kristen Toole came in and pinch hit, uh, talked about the summer programming. Um, and so uh, one of the main things uh, that we emphasize with our summer programming, and I'm not talking credit recovery here, uh, but with uh, some of the work with our younger students, is that we don't want it to be an exact repeat of what they had in the format that they had during the regular school year. So it tends to be much more hands-on, experiential, um, kind of like the um, PBL stuff um, that we're talking about as we incorporate that more into our instructional strategies uh, during the school year. Uh, and Kristen did a great job of uh, going over the philosophy and those kinds of things. And then the talent development uh, we spoke about earlier and then the board approved uh, that curriculum recommendation or recommendations at the last meeting. And then um, the April meeting will be a heavy focus on the math adoption. Um, as you think about uh, what's happened here in the last couple years, some things have kind of backed up at the state MDE level. And so uh, some things also backed up on us a little bit over the course of time in the curriculum review process. So we've had uh, really three, we'll have three major adoptions in consecutive years which usually you would try to stagger a heavy adoption, then a lighter adoption, and then a heavy one again. Uh, but we will have had a language arts adoption, uh, we've had a science adoption, and now the um, math curriculum adoption. Uh, basically, um, elementary, middle school, and high school have all had a chance to review curriculums and make their recommendations. That's what DACRAC will listen to and approve um, next Tuesday evening and then that will go before the board. Uh, one of the unique things about this adoption is that um, the new math curriculum uh, becomes fairly heavily dependent in, um, in teaching it on smart panels. So we will be purchasing roughly, I think it's 66 smart panels as part of this math curriculum adoption because you just can't access the lessons and instruction without that technology in place. Um, so one of the things, not only am I interested in, um, in the curriculum that ends up being recommended, uh, but we also then need to look and see uh, what the materials we need to order, uh, what the cost of the adoption will be. It's gonna, this will be a pricey one. Um, we have $600,000 in the uh, curriculum budget. Uh, but that needs to take care of the curriculum and it needs to take care of the 66 smart panels. So, um, 
Then uh, this is just a note that we have the 2022 Support Staff of the Year nominations open. And so uh, we're looking forward to, we have um, 31, not 31 nominations, but 31 people have gone in to nominate somebody so far, which is a really nice um, show of appreciation for all of our support staff. And then we will establish a small committee to review those people that have been nominated and uh, make our selections. Uh, we will plan to have that celebration uh, after school sometime in early May. Then on the facility side, uh, maybe more for uh, the public viewing this, is uh, we will have a, a meeting with Zerberg and Ari Morton during our work session. And we will be discussing or hearing a presentation on um, a draft of the Lincoln School Phase Two design, uh, which is really exciting. Um, in advance of that meeting here in, in 15, 20 minutes, I do think uh, Zerberg has done an excellent job uh, listening to uh, the concerns, which focus mainly on uh, student safety, uh, but also on the wish list that the uh, kindergarten staff uh, has given to uh, both the administration and Zerberg to try to make sure that this facility is really designed to function the way the teachers and the staff want it to function and to have a nice secure building and safe area for our students. So looking forward to uh, that formal presentation here during the work session. And with that, uh, I'll turn it over to any questions. I just, I don't know who manages the social media, but I've seen more social mm -hmm. media posts from the district mm -hmm. than ever from all the different activities and yes. whoever's yeah, yeah. behind <coughs> that or if it's a couple people. It's awesome. I mean, it's a great way to stay up to date. Yeah, well, I'll give credit where credit is due. So Jesse Thorstead is the overarching head of our social media, uh, but Amber Hovland does a tremendous job on the student activity side. Hannah Lehman has recently expressed an interest in helping out, so she's been contributing. Uh, Elaine contributes to it as well, um, especially on the HR side, school closures, uh, openings, um, and then we also have uh, some postings now and then from like the counseling department, scholarship notifications, that kind of thing as well. So uh, it is nice, a nice team approach and uh, there's been some really fun things to highlight going on in the mm -hmm. district. Mm -hmm. I think the Ainsley Hansen, I think you said it was a meat record, but I think, wasn't it also a school record? School, mm -hmm. but I think school, the school record and CLC in the world. Right. Did I, say, I think I saw somebody took a picture of Ainsley with the previous record holder, so that was interesting. Yeah. yeah. So the journal, we yeah. had the journal come and uh, yeah. who was that? You know, Sharon Coons. Yes. That was nice. Yeah. Any other questions for Superintendent Drake? Okay, we'll move on to the general consent items. We have the minutes from the March 28th board meeting. And then we'll go to Kirby with the bills and treasurer's report. Yes, on the treasurer's report, um, um, our, uh, the, fund, the fund balance is, uh, is doing well. We, we didn't have a lot of bills, big bills this last month, but we did have some, some pretty good income coming in. So, so we still have a healthy fund balance and, and uh, I want to give credit to Marcy for doing a nice job of, uh, of keeping up on this month where we're in between uh, um, finance uh, managers. So uh, going into the bills, um, Matt and I came in early today and went over the bills with Marcy and uh, we reviewed them. Um, some of the things that stood out a little bit, there was about $38,000 that went to uh, leisure time and I think that was for the uh, Washington DC trip. Um, I guess this is maybe something that we should talk about or when, as long as Derek is here at our activities meeting next time. Because um, we had $7,700 went to Amber and she had to cover all of the, was it the rooms for the girls basketball? So I know when we did MSBA this year, in years past we've paid ahead of time or billed the district, but this year we had to use our own credit card and it sounds like the hotel they were staying at wouldn't take a check this year, so she had to put on her personal card. Mm -hmm. So there's something we can do to 
it's becoming more and more, even in more the past common. year or two, yeah. where we've always said, most hotels don't take checks. Right. But if you say it's coming from the school, if we can get the exact amount, we'll bring a check, even a couple depending yeah. on how long we're going to stay. Yeah. They've always said they could. Right now, some of them are saying they can, but when we get down there, they won't take the check because right. the manager's not there or whatever it is. Sure. So, yeah, it's You, you can set up a preliminary anymore. piece, too, with the, the hotels, where you do all the documentation prior to that. It's not a check. But for them to take the card, that's another piece that we've done with the school board too in the past. Sure. Yeah. Um, which might be a better way of it's it's not convenient and it's cumbersome and you have to fax things back and forth. Right. It's unfortunate. You would think it would be much easier. And a lot of times for us, it's we don't know because we we don't stay the whole time. If let's sure. say we would lose, yeah. You know, we we could be leaving on Thursday. We could be leaving yep. on Friday. No, I understand. On Saturday yeah. and so. Yeah. They, it's becoming much, much more difficult to work with. Where we used to always just do a check. Right. You guys don't have a credit card, like a like a not business card, sure. really. Not, I mean, we for, for these type of things. So then, what ends up is then she put seventy seven hundred dollars on her personal card, and then we reimbursed her. Well, that that's our concern from the finance. Mm -hmm. side. No, I, yeah, that's, I know. I'm just yeah. I'm just surprised that there isn't an app. Right, uh, and we can follow up on that. There's, there's a couple other things we want to follow up on here too. Mm -hmm. but, so <coughs> I don't want to dwell on too long here. Sure. Um, Liberty leasing, um, it's pretty much a standard bill. I guess it's getting hard for some reason with all the supply chain things. It's getting hard to get toner cartridges. We always have had a couple extra toner cartridges on hand, and they're saying, "No, we don't have enough, so you can't have extras on hand." So it's always something. <laughs> um, Thirty-two thousand dollars to ATS and R, the uh, payment for uh, the work they've done so far on the Chiller project. Um, we had a, a double payment this month on uh, on one of our food distributors. For some reason, they didn't bill us in February, so we had double billing in March. Um, a couple, two or three thousand dollars to JK Sports was for baseball. It's that time of year. I see it outside playing tonight. Um, Nineteen thousand, almost twenty thousand to Lakes Country Service Co-op, and that was for the pass through for Lakes Country Academy. Um, R. A. Martin, four thousand dollars. That was for uh, Lincoln pre pre-construction. Right now we have three thousand dollars for football helmets, and um, so the other two things that we think we should talk about at some point in the future, make a note to talk about, would be um, snow plowing. Um, we have a couple different snow plowing outfits depending on what buildings we're doing, and some of them are built in detail by the minute, and some of them are built just by the day or by the month or whatever. So there's a vast difference in the detail of the buildings. And so it might be something we could look at in the future if, it's, if we could do some, some bidding or if, we can, if there's some things that we can do in-house if we want to get into the cell phone business more than what we are now. That was one. Um, the other one, and we can talk about this a little bit in our work session tonight with Zerberg, is it, it seems like the, uh, the natural gas bill for Lincoln School is very high. It was uh, $8,300 this month, and it was over 9000 last and uh, I mean, when you compare it to the other buildings, and of course there's supplemental, or there's electric heat <coughs> in most of their buildings, but uh, just seem like a lot. And I realize gas prices are high, <coughs> but um, as we move forward and close to doubling the space, maybe it'll help. There's a lot more warm bodies in there, little bodies. <laughs> but um, so I think uh, part of the uh, thing the architects would look at would be energy usage in the building. So. That's what I have for the finance, or the bills and the treasurer's report. Any questions for Kirby? Okay, we'll move on to personnel. Mm -hmm. Good, evening. Good evening, everyone. A few items tonight, um, which will continue to uh, increase as we get through the hiring process here. Um, uh, under certified staff hire, we have Andrew Crummy, substitute uh, teacher in the area of science. Um, certified staff resignation, Sarah Van Erp. Uh, elementary teacher over at Adams, certified staff retirement, uh, Carol Ringel, uh, elementary teacher at Cleveland, and we do have a resolution a little later on uh, honoring her and her time with our school district. Support staff resignations, we have Tracy Williams in food service, um, and Tracy is resigning in food service, a part-time position, to take on a full-time position as a custodian here at Kennedy Secondary School. And then Jasmine Rockle, Title I paraprofessional at Adams, um, that's effective at the end of the school year, and she's uh, resigning so she can complete her student teaching, which is awesome. So we should invest in that journey also. And then last is a no, um, notice to desire to negotiate from our Education Minnesota Purpose Ball Special Education Paraprofessional Association. So I'd recommend all these four 
Uh, board for hope. Thank you. Um, can I get a motion to approve the general consent items? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Or say nay. Motion passes. There's no old business, but we have some new business. Um, so there's a resolution discontinuing and reducing educational positions and programs. Whereas the School Board of Independent School District number 544 adopted a resolution on January 24, 2022, directing the administration to make recommendations for reductions in programs and positions. And whereas said recommendations have been received and considered by the school board be it resolved by the school board of independent school district 544 as follows that the following programs and positions or portions thereof be discontinued district ride including iq academy the certified positions 6.1 fte's um, there's one in art elementary um, class size reduction elementary business facts math science special education and world language um, and then support staff positions, down three FTEs, special ed paraprofessionals, three FTEs. Could I get a motion to approve discontinuing and reducing educational positions and programs? So moved. And a second. I'll second. Um, roll call, Missy. Uh, Kirby Anderson. Yes. Natalie Knudsen. Yes. Matthew Lemke. Yes. Missy Hermes. Yes. Stephen Bigasa. Yes. The resolution is adopted. Thank you. Um, could I get a motion to approve the 2022-2023 Fergus Falls School District calendar? Or maybe I should ask Superintendent Draft Drake, do you have anything? Yeah, just a couple notations. Um, Missy alluded to one uh, change in that we moved the late March staff development day uh, until early, up to early November. It'll follow the end of first quarter uh, on that Friday. And this will allow the training that we get to be put into application during the course of school year, whereas the late March one with the school year close to coming to an end just wasn't the best placement. Then the other uh, kind of major change is when you look at the evening dates for the spring parent-teacher conferences, only evening dates, uh, those may be viewed somewhat um, flexibly. Um, so there is really no reason that the elementary, the middle school, and the high school has to have the parent-teacher evening conferences in the spring all in the same evenings. Um, the high school wants to use those two nights primarily for course registration moving forward where parents would come in with their student and register for the following year's courses. Um, the middle school might prefer them to be just a little bit later um, because they're just getting kids in, around January 20th for the third quarter. Um, so when they're early in February, it doesn't give those teachers much time to um, get to know the new students in those third quarter classes. And then the elementary teachers might prefer that they be a little bit on the earlier side. So if they have concerns with the student's performance, they can meet with the family. Uh, they can talk about um, where the student is at and put in any additional interventions, et cetera, uh, that might be appropriate. And then they also weigh that too with, um, as you have conversations with students that might be better off maybe repeating a grade uh, you don't they don't want them too early in the semester either because then you just head, end up doubling up on those conversations later in the spring so there is a little bit of an art to it um, but we we have talked with uh, the ffea we've talked internally as an administration and uh, we don't think this is going to cause any problems for our students or families if there's a little flexibility in the spring on those two evening parent teacher conference nights Otherwise, the rest of it's very straightforward. There's not a lot of wiggle room uh, in these calendars, so it kind of kind of falls where it falls. Thank you. Can I get a motion to approve the 22-23 school district calendar? So moved. And a second. A second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 <coughs> say nay. Motion passes. 
motion passes. Um, request, there is a request for additional staffing at Kennedy Secondary School and IQ Academy for the 2022-2023 school year. Um, fax teacher at one FTE, a teacher, one FTE, language arts at 0.25, social studies teacher, 0.33, reach teacher, um, 0.5 FTEs, and a science teacher at 0.1667 FTEs. And in talking with Superintendent Drake, these are mostly the annual changes or requests. Can I get a motion to approve? The request for additional staffing. So moved. And a second. Second. Are these are these uh, I'm trying to start the discussion? Sure. Okay. Uh, these are basically re reflecting registration and numbers for those courses. Yes, high right. school registration numbers. Okay. Uh, the one caveat to that um, is that reach position. Mm -hmm. So that we have a, had a retirement in science. And so the teacher that was doing reach for that point five position is licensed in science. So she's been brought in to um, cover part of that uh, retirement. And so that's why that point five reach is showing up. And then there's just a little bit of a, a addition on the uh, IQ side, and that was also due to a retiring science teacher. And then that will make that uh, one FTE. The rest of it is all due to, so if you look at language arts and social studies, uh, that's due to increased enrollment with these bigger classes moving into 912. And then uh, facts and the ag teacher were driven by uh, student choices for electives. Oh, all in favor say aye. 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 Can you say nay? The motion passes. Thank you. <laughs> and um, we have a resolution on the retirement of Carol Ringel. Whereas Carol Ringel began her employment with the Fergus Falls Public Schools in August 2009. And whereas Carol has been a valued employee with the Fergus Falls Public Schools for the past 13 years. And whereas Carol has been a dedicated elementary teacher for the district, and now therefore be it resolved by the Fergus Falls School Board to thank Carol Ringel for her 13 years of service to the Fergus Falls Public Schools. Can I get a motion to um, pass the resolution of retirement of Carol Ringel? I'll offer the resolution before its adoption. And a second? I'll second that. And a roll call, please. Uh, Natalie Knudsen. Yes. Matthew Lemke. Yes. Missy Hermes. Yes. Stephen Bigginson. Yes. Kirby Anderson. Yes. <coughs> the resolution is adopted. Thank you. That concludes our meeting for tonight. Our next regular school board meeting is Monday, April 25th, 515, right here at the Otter Community Room. And can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. And a second? A second. Favor, say aye. 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 Say nay. Resolution passes. <coughs> <coughs>